Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today for episode 2 of 5 on one of my favorite things, wine. I am Trace, and today we're talking about the science behind wine. If you want to know the history about it, check out yesterday's episode, and subscribe and stick around for the rest of this series if you want to know more about wine pairings and how wine is even made. But first, we have to talk about the berries and the science behind the wine itself. There's a huge variety of alcoholic beverages that are made pretty much all the same kind of way. They ferment a sweet liquid, and the fermentation process creates some alcohol, and that alcohol makes people silly. Vegetable juices like honey and milk can be created into this fermented system to create these alcoholic beverages. You could say that science is the difference between wine, though, and the rest of these. Gin is a fairly simple thing to make in comparison to having to grow the perfect grapes with the perfect climate and then turn that into wine. The science of the winemaking process actually gets really, really complicated, but we're going to try and, and give you the, the essence of this. Obviously, wine comes down to the berries, right? The little berries. And each little berry and each bunch of grapes is important. A winemaker or someone who is, runs their own vineyard, their whole job is to know everything about the vines they're growing, how much water they're getting, their sunlight and the climate, and they keep an eye on every grape. Winemakers need to know how the berries look, how they smell, how they taste, how they change throughout their growing seasons, and how they know this is to know about the grapes themselves. The structure of the grape is actually very simple. It's got the seed in the middle, it's got the flesh, and then it's got the skin on the outside, like most fruit. Wine is actually created from the flesh, but the other bits all contribute. Each of the pieces of tissue have different compositions, which means that they contribute differently to how the final product of wine is going to taste. The wine can change just by changing the size of the berry. It can change by how old the berry was when it was harvested. There are so many different little teeny nuances. The berry gets nutrients two different ways. Xylem and phloem, if you remember uh, biology class. The xylem is the vasculature in a plant that transports water and minerals, growth regulators, nutrients, and so on from the roots all the way up to the vine. It's also then the phloem, which is with the vasculature involved in taking a photosynthate or sucrose transport, sugar transport, from the leaves back into the vine, and that helps feed the grapes. There are two successive sigmoidal growth periods that determine berry growth. Sigmoidal is sort of like an S-curve. Think of it like a, like a curve up with a pause or like a leveling off and then another big curve up. The first growth period lasts from the blooming of the vines to about 60 days afterward. During that period, the first berries are formed. It's very exciting. The seed embryos are produced and rapid cell division occurs every few weeks, making the berry grow in size. That will determine the berry size. During the first growth period, the berry is also expanding in volume, but the solutes inside of the berry are coming together to accumulate inside. Those solutes are a number of different things, but the most prevalent are tartaric acids and malic acids. These acids are what gives a wine its acidity and are very important when it comes to wine quality and they're developing pretty early on. Other acids are accumulated throughout the growth period. It's important because of their involvement in browning reactions, which is the color of the grape, the color of the wine, and are precursors to the volatile compounds that turn into the smell and the, the kind of whole experience of drinking the wine. A very famous part of wine is a tannin. Tannins are the stuff responsible for bitter and astringent properties of red wine. Uh, astringency we'll come back to when we, we talk about drinking wine. And these compounds are also believed to be important in red wine color stability. On top of all of those things, those are the things that really affect the flavor, there are also things like minerals, amino acids, micronutrients, aroma compounds, and those are all present during the first period of berry growth, in the first 60 days. That is a stressful two months, y'all. Those acids can affect everything about your wine and you don't even get to make the wine yet. So after the first 60 days, the growth kind of levels off before the second growth period starts. And this is when the berry starts to get soft and change color and become a grape the way that you would recognize it. During this period, the berry will often double in size. The solutes are still in there, but 
their concentration is reduced because the berry is getting bigger, it's swelling. That's why grapes that are more mature are less sour. Their concentration of the solutes is lower. Many compounds produced during the first growth period aren't just diluted because of the berry's size. I mean, that depends. It's different depending on what berry you're talking about. But malic acid is reduced considerably depending on climate. Say, warmer regions, they'll have less malic acid than a cooler region. The tannins will decline because of oxidation, just being exposed to oxygen in the air. And other notable aroma compounds produced during the initial growth period are all going to decline as the fruit ripens. The biggest change, though, during the second growth period of your grapes is the increase in special sugar compounds, most notably glucose and fructose. Glucose, simple sugar, fructose, fruit sugar. The increase is a result of a biochemical shift as the fruit ripens. The onset of ripening is called the verasion, and sugar becomes just everywhere in the berry. Sucrose is produced from photosynthesis, and it's imported into the grape during fruit ripening by the plant. Once the berries are filled with sucrose, it's hydrolyzed into its sugars and becomes glucose and fructose. Pretty common, happens in a lot of fruits. The winemaker, their job is to watch this whole process and make sure that it's going the best way possible to make wine. This sounds really complicated because it is. They need to know its sugar content and also how the climate, the weather, the variety of grape, how many leaves there are around, you know, all of these different things, the soils, everything, all that so that they can take it off the vine, mush it up, and just ferment the crap out of it until it's delicious, delicious wine. In the end, these are plants, right? A plant's job is to produce fruit so that that fruit can then create more plants. The reason the berry is there is because it has a seed in the middle. The first priority of that plant is to drop that seed. So during the first growth period, the seeds are tart and sour and, and not very enjoyable for animals, so animals don't eat them. But during the second growth period, the seed is ready to start a new plant, so the berries get super yummy. I've actually eaten berries right off of the vine. I think they were Cabernet berries, and they're very sweet. They're super sugary, way more so than the big plump ones you get at the store. Now you know why, because the big plump ones aren't as consolidated with their flavor. But because they're so little and so delicious looking, birds are gonna wanna peck it right off the vine and then go poop it out so that it grows a new plant. That's the job of the vine. And wineries don't let that happen. They wanna, of course, take the berries off the vine before they get to that point so that they can turn them into wine. But we're not quite there yet. Now we're gonna have a special guest come in and tell us how the soils and the climate can affect how those grapes grow. So make sure you subscribe and come back to Test 2 Plus tomorrow so you can get all you need to know about that. And then make sure you come back the next day because we're going to have her in again to talk about how to enjoy the final product. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus, everyone. Let us know down in the comments if you know anything about wine, you want to share some tips on berries and fruit growth and all that stuff. And if you don't know anything about that, why don't you let us know down in the comments what you think about wine. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus again. I'm Trace. See you next time.